SpaceX's Starlink was born to make human life better. It brings those who are in remote and underserved areas high speed, low latency, continuous internet connectivity, and it's so great to realize that now its impact is not just for ground-based internet, but for internet in orbit as well. Indeed, SpaceX and VAST just announced a new internet space station, which promises to provide incredibly high bandwidth capabilities that NASA astronauts never have on ISS. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On April 9, 2024, artificial gravity space station startup, VAST announced that they and SpaceX reached the agreement for SpaceX to provide Starlink connectivity to future VAST platforms. The most notable is Haven 1, which is scheduled to be the world's first commercial space station. It will be equipped with SpaceX's Starlink laser terminal providing gigabit per second speed, low latency connectivity to its crew users, internal payload racks, external cameras, and instruments. Starlink primarily utilizes radio frequency, RF technology for communication between satellites in the constellation and ground stations. At present, SpaceX has come up with the idea of using lasers for on-orbit connectivity within the Starlink constellation as a potential technology enhancement. Instead of relying solely on RF links, Starlink satellites could incorporate laser communication terminals for establishing direct communication links between satellites. This would enable faster and potentially more reliable communication between satellites within the constellation, reducing the reliance on ground stations for relaying signals. Compared to RF, laser communication offers the potential for higher data rates, thus improving the overall performance and bandwidth available to users. Not only that, but it also decreases latency for users, particularly for applications requiring real-time data transmission, such as online gaming and video conferencing. What's more, laser communication can be more secure compared to RF communication. Thanks to those benefits, the Haven 1 crew can be able to connect their personal devices via Wi-Fi to the Starlink network and have unprecedentedly better internet connectivity on orbit to host outreach video calls and perform experiments and science with full, high-speed internet access. Even during crew rest time, they will be able to use high-speed internet. Beyond Haven 1, Starlink can also provide high-quality connectivity for VAST's next space station, which the company plans to bid for in NASA's upcoming commercial low-Earth orbit destinations competition. We expect their network and technology leading position to continue and accelerate over time, which is why we are excited to have the chance to partner with SpaceX on deploying their first laser connectivity for a space station said Max Hayat, VAST CEO. We are excited for VAST's Haven 1 to be the first commercial space station to stay connected with Starlink, said Stephanie Bednarek, SpaceX's senior director of commercial sales. Frankly, high speeds, low latency, and long-term connectivity in orbit are what NASA astronauts dream of having on the ISS. The loss and delay of signal on ISS is very common due to the limited ground stations. As far as I know, the signal delay to ISS is usually 2-3 seconds, making the round-trip delay 3-6 seconds. The telemetry latency is variable because the ISS isn't at a fixed point. It orbits the Earth, changing the path length. The delay is also not a simple calculation of path length. There are multiple interfaces that add potential delays. To avoid that, the space stations connected with Starlink would be outfitted with the same laser transceivers Starlink sats use and act like any other node in the Starlink network. Anyway, thanks to this agreement, the partnership between VAST and SpaceX is getting more healthy and sustainable to create and accelerate greater accessibility to space and more opportunities for exploration on the road to making humanity multiplanetary. In May 2023, VAST announced that SpaceX would launch Haven 1, followed by two human spaceflight missions to the Haven 1 space station. Haven 1 is VAST's first station, which is intended to operate on its own initially, but will eventually become one module in a larger VAST station when it connects with others launched later. Haven 1 is intended to be put in orbit in August 2025 via launch partner SpaceX, which will also provide the first human occupants of said space station, a short while later using SpaceX Dragon Crew capsule. A SpaceX Crew Dragon will carry four astronauts for a 30-day mission on LAO orbit. The company will also provide crew training, mission simulations, and spacesuits. Haven 1 is small enough that it can be launched atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, the 14-ton, 
3.8 meter wide module will provide 70 cubic meters of pressurized volume and will carry 150 kilograms of preloaded cargo mass. It features a docking hatch designed for Crew Dragon and looks to be a little over double the height of SpaceX's human-rated spacecraft. On the module, a docking port is situated at one end and a large window is on the opposite one. VAST will also conduct the world's first spinning artificial gravity experiment with Haven 1. VAST is selling four crewed seats for the Haven 1 mission, which can include both international space agencies and private customers. VAST is a young space company founded in 2021 by the American entrepreneur Jed McCaleb and based in Long Beach, California. Since its debut, VAST set itself as a possible future leader in the sector of commercial space stations. At the beginning of 2023, VAST announced the relocation to a newly built 11,100 square meter facility where Haven 1 will be designed and manufactured. Shortly after, VAST announced the acquisition of the space startup launcher, which is developing the orbiter payload host and the E2 engine. After Haven 1 and other possible Falcon 9 class modules, VAST is planning to launch in 2028 a bigger space station module relaying on SpaceX fully reusable Starship Super Heavy Lift rocket. This is an important step towards the development of a 100 meter long spinning stick space station that provides various gravitational environments, including Earth, Mars, Moon, and asteroid gravities. The artificial gravity station will be assembled in space with seven Starship launched modules. The spinning stick station will accommodate up to 40 astronauts and is scheduled to be launched in the late 2030. In a longer-term project, VAST aims to operate dozens of artificial gravity and zero-gravity space stations across our solar system. VAST's schedule would put it ahead of Axiom Space, which plans to launch its first commercial module to the ISS in 2026. VAST's president, Max Hott, acknowledged that his company's schedule was ambitious but that the simplicity of its approach, including leveraging crew Dragon systems to support crews when docked to Haven 1, made that schedule feasible. He was also skeptical of Axiom's schedule, noting the company hasn't yet announced launch plans for its initial module. However, when I looked for updates on the progress of both companies on X, I realized that while VAST has not shown any information, Axiom publicized the image of their first module, Ax H1. Obviously, VAST and Axiom are not the only space companies chasing the race to develop commercial space stations. The market for the commercial space station has bloomed dramatically in recent years, which provides NASA with multiple options. They seem to be big on dissimilar redundancy these days, and other agencies may pursue their own stations anyway if they can get the funding, whether public or private, Orbital Reef, for example. NASA is even eyeing SpaceX's Starship as a possible space station, Starship is a potentially great Swiss army knife that can be reapplied to a lot of different applications. And as far as I can tell, SpaceX's proposal is as simple, just a standalone modified ship with an internal volume roughly similar to the ISS. Nevertheless, I think it is unlikely that SpaceX will pursue this project, at least in the near future. They're not gonna sink too many resources into it when they have to build a launch cadence refilling an HLS to worry about. It will take some time for Starship to offer a really low-cost launch. Estimates put a full stack at roughly $100 million per launch, and amortizing costs with reusability will take a few years. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.